Hello, I am Sally Glenn of Saved by Grace Ministries. Please share and like us on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and turn on those notifications. My message this time is life to death or death to life. I'm going to be sharing a word of testimony, actually my own experience. We are in the Easter season now, and this is really a glorious time, a time of resurrection and new life. Easter is my favorite holiday. In fact, it puts meaning into Christmas. Yes, it does. For that matter, it puts meaning into everything, literally everything else. I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 4. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. And this is what I received and I have passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. This, of course, is Paul's word. And these verses, verses 1 through 4, put forth the gospel in a nutshell. That in itself is the basic gospel message. Glory and hallelujah. This is indeed good, good news. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is in fact the very best news of all. Oh yes, he defeated death, hell, and the grave and made a show of them openly. Hey, you can't get any better than that. Bob and I have been to Israel twice. The first time we went was in 1980. We were with a tour group then, and our tour guide announced to us the day that we had planned to go down the Via Della Rosa, which, by the way, is the path of sorrows, the path that Jesus took on the way to the cross. Our tour guide announced to us that we would not be able to walk down the Via Della Rosa because we simply didn't have time. Oh, there was so much disappointment that he changed his mind <laughs> and he said, well, we will be able to do it, but understand that we are on the opposite side of Jerusalem and we will be able to do it, but we will be taking it in reverse order. So we found ourselves walking down the Via Della Rosa in reverse order backwards. I began complaining to the Lord. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I bet I'm not alone. But I was saying to the Lord, Lord, this was not what I was hoping for. It is so backwards. Indeed, it literally was backwards. So I was saying all of this to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I never meant for you to walk from life to death, but rather from death to self to new life in me. 
About that time, we came up upon our very last stop, which was at St. Anne's Church, which is a place that is well known for its acoustics. And the musician from our group was already there, and as we entered this beautiful church, which was the starting point for Jesus, uh, as we entered our ending point, our musician was singing the song, Because He Lives. At that point in time, a white dove flew in the opening, which was acting as a door, and that dove circled her, and every one of us pulled out our Kleenexes and sobbed like babies. It was quite a moment and we knew it was God. Yes, praise God, He lives. He lives, hallelujah. The second time we went to Israel was just a couple of years ago and it was very, very special too. This time we went on our own and we were able to revisit sites which we had wanted to do. We found ourselves revisiting the garden tomb, a very, very special site. There is a sign there that says, He is not here for He is risen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to show you this picture which we have put on our tract. It says, Good News from the Grave. This picture is, of course, of the garden tomb, and it looks just like this. I now want to read you this tract which I wrote. It is, of course, our Easter tract, and I titled it, Good News from the Grave. Just as an angel announced the good news of Jesus' birth, an angel also made the announcement of the glorious news of his resurrection. Now, a sign at the garden tomb in Jerusalem proclaims to all he is not here, for he is risen. Indeed, he is, and he has left an empty tomb. There's no other religion that has such evidence, and there's no other faith that can make such a claim. Founders of other religions are still in the grave. There's nothing that could be more convincing proof that Jesus truly is the Son of God. Only God has such power over death, and only He can make the grave become a doorway to larger life. And that is good, good news. With his voluntary death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus paid the price for our eternal salvation. He took on our sin and died in our place that we might have his life. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. Now, let's pray. Jesus, I recognize that you are truly the Son of God and that you have left an empty tomb. I believe the evidence as proclaimed in the Bible. Thank you for taking on my sin and dying in my place. I receive your life and love. Fill me with your spirit and power. In Jesus' name, amen.